Hi, my name is James. Welcome to my Stump Window Manager installation tutorial. In this video, I'm going to show you how to install Stump Window Manager. I'm going to install Stump Window Manager from the Git source repository and I'm going to install it on the Ubuntu Linux distribution. So you can see here I've got a fresh install of Ubuntu. I'm running it in VirtualBox. And I've installed Ubuntu 20.04.3 LTS. It's 64-bit and you can see X11 there. So the first thing we're going to do is look at the Stump Window Manager uh, readme page in the GitHub repository and there's install instructions here. You could install Stump Window Manager by using your Linux distributions package manager but if you do it that way you're kind of stuck with the version that they give you so unless you're using Arch Linux and using the AUR you'd probably get an old version of Stump so when you start off with Stump Window Manager you might be a bit confused about the install process so I've drawn a diagram to make it look a bit easier because it's written in common lisp we need to install a common Lisp compiler. We're going to install SBCL, which is the only compiler that works with Stump Window Manager. It stands for Steelbank Common Lisp. On top of that, we're going to install Quick Lisp, which is a common Lisp library manager. It's like a package manager, and it will install the library packages we need to build Stump Window Manager. There's three dependencies that we need, CLX, cl-ppc-re and alexandria once we have those installed we can build stump window manager you could also install those packages from your linux distributions repositories but i prefer to use quick lisp to handle dependencies so we'll start off by installing sbcl okay so i'm on my fresh install of ubuntu and I'm going to go to the GitHub readme page of Stump Window Manager. There is a link to SBCL here. So you notice down at the bottom there's a message saying the recommended way to install SBCL is by downloading one of their pre-built binaries available on their web page or building it from source. Please do not install SBCL using your distribution's package manager, especially Ubuntu. The reason it gives this uh, message is because if you use Ubuntu, you're probably getting an old version of SVCL. So you, you, you might run into errors. And likewise, if you use a, the very latest version of SVCL, you might run into errors too. So you might have to downgrade for a while. So it's no harm to know how to build SVCL from source or install one of the pre-built binaries. So I'm going to right click on the SBCL link and you'll be opening up the SBCL website and you can see Steelbank Common Lisp there. You can see the version of SBCL there. I'm going to go to the downloads page and you can see a matrix there of all the architectures. And I'm in the binaries section of the, the website. So I'm looking for 64 bit and I can check my OS. I'm just going to go to my terminal and I'm going to make a folder called builds and I'm going to cd into builds and I can tell my architecture by doing uname-m and you see I'm 64-bit so I'm just going to go back here. I'm going to select this one here, which is 64 bit and it's version 2.1.8. So I'm just going to right click and copy the link. I'll go back to my terminal and I'll use wget, which is installed on my Ubuntu. Um, it might depend on your Linux um, distribution, whether you have wget installed, so I'm just going to download the source there. And there's install instructions here on the getting started page. So you can just unzip what you've downloaded. And I can do an ls-a 
and I'm just going to paste in that and when I hit return it'll extract the tarball and it's given me an error there because I have not put in 64 bit for my architecture Um, so you'll see now it has extracted the contents of the tar file. I can do an ls-a and I'm going to cd into that folder. So I'm now in the folder and I can I can just take this script here, the install.sh script. And I'm going to add a sudo because I'm installing to user local bin. And I'm going to paste that. And SBCL has been installed. Okay, so we can clear that. And we can launch SBCL. And you'll see that SBCL is now installed. I can try a common Lisp expression in there to add three numbers. So I'm just going to add three, three, three. And you see it gives me nine. So SBCL is working and to exit out of it you would just do exit in parentheses. And you could also check your SBCL version by going SBCL dash dash version. And you'll see there that's that installed. So next we'll install QuickLisp. Okay, so I'm just going to cd back out of the directory I'm in. And I'm in the home directory now. And if I go to the stump readme page, there's a link to QuickLisp. And we'll open that up. And there's an installation instructions for QuickLisp here. So what QuickLisp is, is you can see there, it's a library manager for Common Lisp, and it works with your existing Common Lisp implementation to download, install, and load any of over 1,500 libraries with a few simple commands. So you can find a command here, and I'm just going to copy that, and QuickLisp is just a, it's just a Lisp file, so I'm going to paste that in here, and I'm going to hit return. Um, you probably might need to check your Linux distribution to make sure that you've got curl installed. Um, I'm just going to hit return, and it's going to download it, and... If you go back here, if you want to check the integrity of the file, you can download the quicklisp.lisp.asc. So I'm just going to copy that and paste that in. So the instructions here don't really work. I'm not sure exactly why, but there's a release key.txt. I can copy that link and go back and do a curl dash o and then paste in the release key and it's downloaded that and there's another step that I need to do here in the terminal I need to check that I have gpg installed so I'm just going to go with gpg dash dash version and it tells me that I'm using 2.2.19 I need to import the release key dot text so I'm just going to do gpg dash dash import release dash key dot text and on the second line it tells me that the public key quick list release signing key is imported I'm just gonna copy this gpg dash dash verify and I'm gonna paste that in 
So what I've basically done here is just check the quicklist.lisp.ac against the quicklist.lisp file and it gives me a primary key print at the bottom. I can then check the primary key print uh, against the one on the website. So when you're happy enough that those match, you should be okay to go. I'm going to clear that now. So I'm going to go back to this page and we're going to load the quicklist file with SBCL. So I'm going to paste that in and hit return. It says to continue with the installation, evaluate quicklist. So I'm just going to copy that and it's basically going to install quicklist. So you can see it fetching the, the packages there and we can go back here and we can just follow this instruction add to init file ql and i'm going to paste that in there and it says it's created a dot sbcl or c file so i'm just going to hit return on that so we're now ready to install the dependencies and we can just copy them from here. So the first one is CLX. And you see it fetching CLX there. And you see a load of periods coming up. Uh, sometimes it can be a bit clunky, um, but it's installed in there and it's installed CLX. When you see the CLX at the bottom, um, you'll know that it's worked. So the second dependency is cl-ppcre. And it's installed that. And the last dependency is Alexandria. And we'll just paste that in there. So it has installed the last dependency, Alexandria. So we can just do exit in parentheses if we want to exit out of that. So we should be okay to go now. We've installed all the dependencies. Um, that's just showing you I've done these steps. So I've done the install and um, down here, it's just loading a package call or it's just searching for a package called Vecto. I didn't search for any packages. And then it's just doing a QL call on quick load Vecto, which is what we did with these packages here. Uh, we've installed those. And the QL call on add to init file, we've already done that in the first step. So I'm not sure if the order makes any difference. I think you can do it at any stage. So you could also go into your file manager and you'll see the dot sbcl or c file which was created when we done the ql colon add to init file and if you go into quick lisp and dists and software you'll see the dependencies that we install there so with the dependencies installed, we can now turn to building Stump Window Manager from source. So we'll do that next. Okay, so I'm back in the at the Stump README or the Stump repository on GitHub. You can click on releases here and you can see all the various releases and you can see the latest release there, Aphrodite Giant, I think. And you can see this source at the bottom. There is a zip and a tar file. Um, if you get down to the next one, you can click on assets and see the zip and tar there. I'm just going to use the latest version from Git. So I'm going to go to my terminal. And I'm going to see the into builds. I'm going to install Git with sudo apt install Git. And I'll get installed. I'm just going to clear that. So I'm going to just select this link here. And I'm going to do a git clone. And I'm just going to paste in the 
link to the stump repository and I'm just going to do an ls-a to see the contents of the directory and I'm going to see the into stump window manager directory so I'm now in the stump window manager directory there is installed instructions down here on how to build stump window manager so the first one is dot forward slash autogen dot sh so I'm just going to try that one and it tells me autoconf is not found so I need to do a sudo apt install autoconf so I'm going to do the autogen again and it's worked that time I'll just clear that again and the next command is dot forward slash configure so I'm just going to paste that in there and it's given me a warning that SBCL okay I think that's it. okay so if someone knows what that warning is about um, they can leave a comment but um, I've gone ahead anyway and it, uh, my stump install works okay so I'm just going to ignore it for now you do not seem to have make info install so you will not be able to build the manuals I'm just going to install that so sudo apt install make info okay so the package should be text info Okay, so I'm going to do another clear and I'm just going to run that command again. I'll go back here and I'm going to copy make. And I'm going to paste it in. So hopefully it'll build Stump Window Manager now. Um, it's working away there. So it gives me a warning at the bottom about... Okay, so I'm just going to proceed anyway for now. And I'm going to do a make install. And I'm going to do a sudo because I'm installing to use a local bin. So I'll paste and hit return. Okay, so it has installed stump into user local bin. So I can go there and check that. Um... I go to other locations, computer, user, local, bin. Okay, so you can see the binary file there that was created when we done the sudo make install. And it's 53.6 megabytes. In the next part, we'll configure Ubuntu so that we can run Stump Window Manager. So we need a way to trigger the Stump binary. And the easiest way to do this, if you've ever used tiling window managers before, uh, or you've ever built a bare bones Linux install, you would use a .x init or C file to launch whatever tiling window manager you're trying to install. So I'm going to create a .x init or C file. And there's an example one on the Manjaro wiki, so I'm just going to copy that on there. And I'm just going to paste it into Emacs. You can use whatever text editor you want. I'm just going to write that as a .x init or C file. And it's wrote there. And I'm going to replace this. And I'm going to point it to the binary here in user local bin. So I'm going to do slash user slash local slash bin slash stump window manager and I'm just gonna move that and save so it saved my dot x in it or c file into my home directory there's one other thing I need to do I need to I need to make the dot x in it or c file executable so I'm going to do a ch mod plus x dot x in it or c and you now see that i've made that executable so 
we can go back out to our home directory. You'll see the .xn.rc file there. If you're not using a login manager, you could probably just do a start x in your TTY. Um, I'm using a login manager. Uh, because I'm using Ubuntu, it's using GNOME. So I can find my login manager by typing cat forward slash etc etc forward slash uppercase x11 default display manager and it tells me I'm using GDM3 if I cd if I cd into slash user slash share slash x sessions and do an ls you'll see I have a desktop file there already for Ubuntu login so I'm going to create one for Stump Window Manager and I'm going to use that to trigger my .xn at RC file. So I'm just going to cd back out of there and I'm going to create a .desktop file. I have already got uh, one of these uh, files created in my .files repository on GitHub. So I'm just going to copy that and I'm going to just create a new scratch buffer with cxb and I'm just going to paste that in and I'm just going to write that and I'm going to use an uppercase s stump window manager dot desktop and confirm and you'll see there it's pointing to home, my username, and then my .xnit or C file. I tried using the tilde in here for home, but it doesn't work. It seems you need the full path. So I have one thing left to do. I have to go to my terminal. I need to copy the stump.desktop file that I've just created in Emacs to user share x sessions so i'm just going to do a sudo mv and i'm going to put that in user share slash x sessions forward slash and i can go back to my file browser and go to user user share x sessions and you can see my file there so i'm just going to close everything and log out now okay so i'm just going to log out and we're out on the login screen if you click down in the bottom right corner you should see an option now for stump window manager so i'm going to select that and i'm going to type in my password okay so we're now logged into stump window manager we can use the prefix key which is control t and question mark and we can see the help and we can also try to run commands so you will see Stump Window Manager is installed and working. So I hope you learned something from this video and we'll see you in the next video. Bye.